Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Stuff They Should Have Taught You in School, narrated by me, Monsui. In this podcast, we cover many different tips, tricks, and life hacks that are essential in adulthood. All of the following is from my own life experience. I'm glad you've joined me on this episode. We're going to approach a somewhat shunned topic. Ever, have you ever wanted more money than you had? Or thought there's too much month at the end of the paycheck? Do you live pay to paycheck to paycheck? Do you have even do you have any savings for a rainy day? Or have any savings at all? Not sure about the UK where I actually live, but I've heard that the average Amer- American has only $500 in their savings, and this is a very scary statistic. What would happen if their car broke down and couldn't get it, and couldn't they couldn't get into work? You know, in in America, it's much worse because um, they we they don't have free health care; they have to pay for it. And uh, can you imagine? You know, you just trip over on the road or whatever, you hurt your foot, or you go, you have to go to the doctor for whatever reason, and you've got less five hundred or less dollars in your savings. You know, that could very easily put you into overdraft and uh you know cause you a lot of issues you can imagine by having such little savings that even the tiniest bump in the road will set you of course i actually had a funny story of one of my friends who when he was younger he went to america and uh, now his family did have light his family did have a uh, health ins- uh, the travel insurance which uh, gave him health insurance over there uh but he he fainted from dehydration and that he was rushed to hospital and I'll give you just a second to guess how much the bill came to. Are you ready? The bill came to $10,000 for dehydration. He told me that they gave him some Gatorade and some water or some shit like that. But can you imagine? $10,000 just for dehydration. Water is like pennies per litre. Why does this happen? Why do people have such little savings? And I, I believe, and this is my own opinion, this is down to lack of education, which comes back to the overall topic of this podcast: stuff they didn't teach you in, uh, stuff they should have taught you in school. So no one taught you this, so it's not necessarily your fault that you don't know, but it is your fault if you're not willing to learn. You cannot manage what you do not monitor or what you do not measure. Let me say that again. You cannot manage what you do not monitor or what you do not measure. What do I mean by this? I mean, for example, how are you going to lose weight if you're not measuring your weight or measuring your waistline at regular intervals? How are you going to improve productivity, for example, if you're not measuring how long it's taking you to do for certain tasks? How if you're still taking exams in college or school? Uh, how do you know if you're improving on those exams and your knowledge is um, increasing if you're not marking those exams, if you're not looking at the marks, seeing how long it's taking you to do certain questions? And it's the same with finances, is that you cannot manage those finances and expect miraculously to get rich or whatever your goal is or even to, you know, maybe you've seen a nice suit or a nice handbag or whatever and you want to save up to that. To do that, you need to manage your finances. And you will not be able to manage your finances if you do not measure them at regular intervals or if you do not monitor them. So the measuring and monitoring are, are two different things, really. So when we're saying measuring our finances, this is essentially like at regular intervals, how much do I have in my bank? Uh, and monitoring them is could be at regular intervals or every time you spend monitoring am I is this within my budget am I spending too much here am I spending more than what I earn which is a massive problem in most of the western society if you imagine <clears throat> for a minute a successful company like Microsoft or Apple how do they become profitable how do they make money how do they know if they're making money They're required by law to submit balance sheets and profit and loss statements. Now, uh, the only law I I know off the back of my hand is UK law. And in the UK, it is 
the law for companies, limited companies, whether they're public, uh, publicly traded on the stock market or whether they're limited company. I think there's more regulations for publicly traders. But anyway, all companies, they have to submit balance sheets and profit and loss statements and they have to pay tax based on their profit and loss statements which means that they must measure this they must measure their profit and their expense their money coming in and their money coming out their assets and liabilities all the time they have to do it by law they have to keep the documentation by law and i think in this country it's seven years they have to keep that for if you don't keep that you know they have to they have to do it by law and this is how companies become successful is because they know exactly where they stand and if you're measuring things like cash flow which is the reason why most businesses even like fail then you know you have a good very good idea of how many months you can run without any income or you know etc etc so essentially all of these businesses they monitor what's going in and out and to do that and uh, by doing that they manage their finances and you should do the same if you have managed to just listen through all of that and you're ready to con- take control of your finances then here we go this is the real juicy bit that you've all been waiting for so take a seat makes get get your notepad ready so of course we have to measure our finances how do we do this there are so 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 many ways to do this now but the basics are still the same Know what's coming in, know what's coming out. Sounds so simple, doesn't it? But why do 90 plus percent not know? Again, I would put it down to lack of education. I may be wrong, but I think that it is lack of education. I would suggest to sort of get your finances in order, manage your finances. I would suggest going through all of your bank statements and credit card statements over the last month. Or if you're really keen, like me, or weird as some people might put it, get the last three to six months of statements, or a year. Mark with a pen or highlighter, or put it in Excel if you think you're cool. All of your unnecessary spending, eating out, buying clothes, cinema, bowling, you know, unnecessary unnecessary amount of times getting haircut, whatever. I've heard even, you know, Bill Gates cuts his own hair make make a list of all of those things the amounts dates description amounts of all of those unnecessary spendings whatever you do by that i mean whatever you do not need to survive so this is not um rent it's not your mortgage it's not your utility bills total it and i guarantee you'll be shocked and i can hear the haters out there but monsui I want to eat out. I like to eat out. Well, hold your horses because I do like to eat out as well. And just bear with me for one minute before you start complaining about, I want to do this and I want to do that. And look, I don't even care. So bear with me one minute while I go through this methodology. When I first did this, I got yearly, I, I, I took my entire year statements and analyzed my entire year statements. And because I'm a cool dude, I put it in Excel as well. Uh, and, I, and then I averaged it to the monthly. I added up my essential expenses, the things I need to survive, like rent, food, like I was saying, utilities. Uh, I added all of those up. Then I took my income, my net income after taxes. And I took 10 and I, and I got 10% of that and I added that to my essential costs. Then I got my net income after taxes minus the 10% from essential costs, uh, minus 10% and then minus essential costs. And whatever I had left was the money that I could, I could budget to whatever I wanted. You know, I could go spend that on bowling or cinema or whatever, you know, whatever floats your boat. I actually have what I call a play budget where I spend about £100 a month on whatever I like, but I limit it to that specified amount. And that £100 hasn't been plucked out the air. That's actually been, um, that's actually the last allocated amount in my bank account. Uh, After all my savings, after all of my rainy day savings, savings for a new car, I actually have multiple saving pots for different things. One of them is for education, one is them to invest, one is for a rainy day, 
etc and you can make them up however you want it however you see fit so i have about a hundred i managed to you know i'm lucky enough to have about that much and uh, i can spend that on whatever i want and you know we're not robots here we cannot simply just save everything we need to have some fun and even if it is just two pound a month or five pound a month spend that on chocolate if you want to spend that on chocolate or something you know let it be you're probably wondering why am i saying 10 percent? well what i'm basically saying is take that and put it straight away into another account a savings account and hide that debit card hide it don't put it in your wallet don't put it in your purse or snap it if, if you're really tempted to keep spending it try and set, set up a standing order so the money comes straight out of your bank on the first of the month or whenever you whenever your income comes in so that you barely even see that money it's like say well, say your money comes in on the first as soon as that 10 percent or whatever you know has gone out straight to your savings you barely even see it you don't have a chance to spend it and debit heart debit cards hidden away somewhere or snapped you can't actually get the money out unless you're going directly to the bank and you prove your ID and then you withdraw the money. It's much harder for you to do that, isn't it? This is your savings account. Protect it with your life. If 10%, you know, if you're thinking, Monsui, I, I, I'm looking at my at my income and uh, all of my essential expenses and my essential expenses are taking up pretty much all of my income. I, I can't I can't afford 10% it's too much why don't you try 3% or 5% and try and increase that over time if you're spending loads on a habit uh, for example eating out you know maybe you eat out five to six times a week try eating out for one month try eating out three or four times a week and then the next month after that try eating out uh, one to two times a week and then the next month after that try just eating out once a week or once every two weeks trust me it might be hard initially to start this but um, once you start it moving it becomes easy have you ever heard of uh, inertia so ideally what you want to do uh, with your other expenses your so-called essential expenses which you're probably putting things like your phone bill into and you're probably putting your things like your TV into and of course your utilities I would suggest call up every single one of your providers and ask them for a discount simple as that just say listen I've been with you for however long I always pay on time hopefully you do and uh, is there any better rate you can offer me or have a look on comparison websites you might you might be surprised we we recently did this in my own household and uh, we managed to save about 30 pound a month we were you know it doesn't sound like much but 30 pound a month could pay for your eating out isn't it could easily pay for that i could go to nando's and have a slap up meal for 30 pound get a nice whole chicken and uh, some sides you know get the bottomless coke as well whereas i normally just have water treat myself you know this is my play budget anyway i would suggest also um with things like tv and phone uh think take it down to basics what do you actually need do you really need to spend i know some people that spend 70 80 90 pound a month on on uh, all of their TV, why don't you just buy a freeview box? You know, maybe you like sports. Maybe that that is something that you can put under your play budget. Uh, but try and reduce it if you can. Things like Netflix and Amazon Prime, are brilliant. Instead of spending fifty pound a month on Virgin or Sky or whatever, we can just spend five or six pound a month, or seven eight pound a month on on Amazon or or Netflix you know it's great way of saving so much money and that money can either go into your savings or uh, fully into your savings if you're a bit robot like or you can say look I've saved 20 pound a month whatever it is let's split half of it put it into our savings and half of it we can spend on ourselves add it to our play budget how about that anyway I think I've gone through the basics about how to sort of strip down your spending look at it go through it uh, go through your statements 
So basically, just to summarize, you need to go through your statements, see what's coming in, what's coming out. Where can you reduce costs? Allocate, at, try to allocate at least 10%. If you can't, start with a smaller amount and increase it over time. Start uh, for your savings and then allocate a pay, play budget. It's important that you have a play budget. I think, I think it is very important because, you know, people that are very money minded like myself might turn around and say, I, I don't want to spend any money on me. I'd rather just invest it all or I'd rather just save it all. I think that we do need to let our hair down every now and then and by budgeting a, an amount, even if it is a small amount, to have a bit of fun you know it's not all about the end goal it is about the journey as well and we should have fun here and there where we can you know like i said before we're not robots we're not built to wake up 7 a.m go to eat force feed yourself eat go to work 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 come home do some more work or whatever housework and then go to bed we should have some times when we can treat ourselves remember you cannot manage what you do not monitor or measure. In learning to manage your spending and incomes and monitoring it monthly or quarterly, I guarantee your net income, your net worth will uh, increase over time. I guarantee your net worth will increase over time if you start to monitor and measure your incomes and expenditure. If you found any of this useful, and you can email me at... Um, and tell me how you're getting on. I'd, I'd love to hear if there's any success stories, you know, anything that I've said that's clicked. If you've managed to start saving, saving money, whereas you didn't have savings before, now you realise the importance of savings. You can email me at mon, monsui at icloud.com. That's M-O-N-S-U-I at icloud.com. Thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and continue to join me on future episodes. Once again, you've been listening to Stuff They Should Have Taught You in School, narrated by me, Monsui. If you have any topic requests, please email me at monsui at icloud.com. That's M-O-N-S-U-I at icloud.com. Thank you.